Hey y'all, it's Miriam and it's time to paint. So let's get started. Today is an exciting day because I'm starting a new piece. I have the panel set up right behind me and I'm gonna take you guys along with me for the whole process. Now, the format of this video is gonna be a little different from my other videos. Um, so if you enjoy it, please let me know in the comments and I'll make more like this. Now, you'll see me painting both in real time and in time-lapse mode, and I'll stop along the way to let you guys know what I'm thinking. Now, obviously it's a blank canvas behind me. I don't know what it's gonna look like at the end. I have an idea, I have a reference photo in mind, I have a color scheme picked out, and I have an emotion or mood that I wanna capture. Now, whether I stick with all those things throughout the process, I don't know yet, so we'll see. Now, throughout the process, you'll see me troubleshoot um, different problems, and I'll try and take you guys inside my mind on how I approach some of these things. So with all of that said, um, let's get started. I'll talk about materials real quick. This is a 24 by 30 inch gesso board. Um, I always prefer working on a hard, flat surface panel versus something like canvas. Um, it's just my personal preference. I really love that a smooth surface panel lets the texture of the paint shine versus, um, you know, when you get up close and see the texture of the canvas. It's a personal choice. It's just what I prefer. I just wanted to let you guys know what I'm using. Um, also, I don't know if I mentioned it yet. This is going to be an acrylic and oil mixed media piece. We're going to do all of our first layers in acrylic. It's going to save me time. It's going to save me money and it's going to allow me a lot of flexibility to make quick decisions on the go. And if I don't like it, I can quickly change it. I don't have to wait for layers to uh, dry in between. And I also don't have to worry about the guilt of wasting very expensive oil paint. So yeah, we're going to start with, um, with the acrylics and let's get started. I have, uh, on my palette paper, just a little bit of Payne's gray, some, uh, transparent mixing white and a little bit of glazing medium. And I'm using all Liquitex soft body acrylics for this part. And um, I have a towel here, this rag, it's a dust free rag, that's pretty important, and a pressurized water bottle. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just start to work in a really kind of light blue color into the background. Um, I love Payne's Gray because it complements um, skin tones really well. Um, no matter how dark or how light, it just provides a really nice compliment. So I often sneak Payne's Gray into the backgrounds. Um, but I think I'm, I'm gonna start with the Payne's Gray, we'll end up warming it up later, but yeah, let's get started. All right, let's pause right here. Um, it's a little crazy looking right now, but I'll put a close up of the texture of this paint so you can really see. I think up close it's really pretty. And remember, this is just the background. Um, this is just the spots that are gonna shine through. I really want this texture there. Um, so a lot of this is gonna end up getting covered up. Um, you saw me fight with this piece a whole lot, this spot. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna let it dry for a minute and um, we're gonna go in, adjust, and yeah, then we get to the really fun part. All right, so at this point, we've got the first pass down in acrylic. Um, I'm liking where it's at. It's obviously a little crazy, a little messy, um, but what I have so far, my major shape. So the head is gonna go in here. This is like the hair. Um, this is gonna be a shoulder, the arm's gonna go down, and this whole part is gonna be the body. Whoops. So yeah, my next step, I'm gonna go in with acrylic and just start to make some of that skin color. I'm not gonna be too worried about accuracy or specifics at this point. I think a lot of the fun comes in when you are, when you let the chaos build organically. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. 
here's the brush that I'm using. It's a Princeton Bright. They're my favorite. You guys have probably heard me talk about them before. Um, I wish I had a larger one at my disposal right now, but I don't. This is the largest one that I have to use for today. And um, it's about, it's still about the size of the width of the eye. I like working with bigger brushes early on because it forces me not to think about details. It forces me to be loose. And for me, that's where a lot of the magic happens. That's where it gets fun. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Oh, let me also say, even though I don't know um, exactly how this is gonna turn out, there's some things that I'm sure of at this point, is I really wanna enhance this line right here, this diagonal, because this diagonal line is gonna lead right up to the eyes. Um, and that's gonna be just a nice compositional tool to help direct the viewer's gaze to where I really want it. Um, so because of that, I'm gonna put a lot of contrast in this area, you know, between the light, the dark, um, and then also save a lot of my contrast for here. Down at the bottom, um, I'm gonna have a lot going on. There's gonna be some flowers in there, but I'm not gonna render them out very detailed or realistically, because again, I want all of my viewers focus up there um, at my focal point, which is gonna be the eyes. Um, the only thing, oh, I will say, okay, down here, there's gonna be some hands somewhere going on here. And uh, I'll probably render those out a little realistically too, just to provide um, a nice bit of juxtaposition. And again, the hands are gonna be here, right in that diagonal line, okay? So I'm gonna put a lot of attention everywhere in that diagonal. All right, let's get into it. All right, actually, before we get started with the skin tone, let me just show you the setup for this part. So I'm gonna be using my Stay Wet palette. Um, it has seen better days. Here's the sponge for it. Um, gosh, it's, I don't know if you guys have seen that meme where it's like, kill me. Um, I feel like that's what my sponge is saying. But anyways, um, why am I gonna use a Stay Wet palette for this part, but I just used palette paper for the other? Well, this part um, was quick, fast. I didn't really care to um, be very accurate with colors. Um, I wanted things to build up in kind of a messy way. For this, for the skin tone, I'm probably going to be doing a lot of adjusting over a long period of time, and I don't want my paints drying out on me. So that's why I'm gonna use the Stay Wet Palette. Um, this is awesome, they're, they're really cheap. I have about three of these laying around my studio. Um, your paint, it makes your acrylic last for a long time without having to use any sort of medium. And I'm talking about days. Days and days, you can keep using your acrylic paint without it drying out. Now, why don't I just add medium to it? Um, I have my big bottle of glazing medium here, which I love. Um, the reason why is you wanna be limited in the amount of medium that you're using, especially anything with gloss in it, if you know you're gonna be putting oil on top because it um, hinders the adhesion. So if I can get away with not using as much medium and um, and still benefit from all the benefits of acrylic, that's what I'm gonna do. So if you see me using this box, uh, that's what I'm gonna do. And then the skin color, I'm just, I'm gonna use the same exact colors that I use for my oil paints, which is Cad Orange, Burnt Umber, Titanium White. And we have a lot of these bluish, greenish, yellowish, cool tones going on. Um, or greenish bluish tones. And I'm gonna mimic a lot of that in the skin tone as well. Um, I'm gonna build up a lot of transparent layers and um, yeah, we're gonna have fun with it. So let's, let's go.
All right, so we're a few hours in. Here's where we're at so far. Let's see if I get it to focus. There we go. Um, I'm quite liking it so far. It's still obviously very early stages, but it has everything that I'm looking for at this stage, at this stage, which is general silhouette. It's not perfect. You know, a lot of this will change. Um, it's got some shape going on. Um, and I think it has a nice color palette already. Um, again, these are just my, my standard colors that I typically work with. Um, I've just kind of muted everything down for now. We'll pump up the contrast in later layers, but, but yeah, so far, um, what time is it? Oh gosh, I think this is probably about three hours already, um, getting into this and I'll, I'll put a close up of it so you can see the texture. There's a lot of fun texture. Uh, build up so far and when I do get to the oils and even the later stages of the acrylic I'm probably gonna do another layer of acrylic. I'm gonna let a lot of this shine through so all of these big areas will stay largely the same but My smaller more detailed areas. That's where I'll go in and render so a lot of times people ask me Why do I do these kind of crazy messy? layers if I'm going to cover them up and it's because a lot of it shines through. It doesn't all get covered up. So yeah, that's the plan. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go in with the oil or with more acrylic right now. Um, just kind of clean some of it up and I want to add, I want to bring more. Okay. So we have some of this blue and the skin tones, but I want to, um, bring more of this Payne's gray kind of make it look like it's vining up. And I am gonna use a little bit of glazing medium to help me do that. Um, I don't know, we'll see if it works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We'll see. All right, let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna pause right here um, because as I start to build onto this, ne this next layer, there's two things I'm gonna be doing. One, I'm gonna be putting form first and foremost. Everything I do now, I'm just trying to think volumetrically, trying to think in form. And this is when I start to get in that tactile mindset where I try to gaslight myself into believing this is a real 3D object. And in my mind, I'm trying to make it pop out of the canvas. Um, that's where a lot of this is happening now. The other thing I'm gonna do is, I'm, I still wanna be loose with it all. I'm holding my paintbrush back pretty far. Um, it's just another trick that helps you uh, get, just free yourself from being too detailed, worrying about perfection. Um, so yeah, let's get into it.
All right, friends. And this is where we're gonna end for today. I think we got a lot of progress done. I'm super excited about it so far. It's obviously still pretty messy, still a work in progress, but um, I think it has a ton of potential and I haven't been this excited about a the start of a painting in a long time. So I'm excited to get working on it tomorrow. Um, tomorrow I'm gonna start with the oil. So again, this is all acrylic so far. And yeah, when I get to the oils, I'm really, I'm, I'm just gonna focus on rounding out forms that need rounded out. So again, I mentioned, I want a lot of the attention and contrast here in the eye. So I'll pay a lot of attention there. I'm gonna leave a lot of the other stuff looser. Um, this area, I definitely need to work on this, this blotchy neck area. And we're gonna, I'm gonna fully render out the hand there. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I think it's it's a good start. And if you guys have any questions about the process so far um, in creating this acrylic underpainting, let me know. Um, and so I've, I've used a very limited palette. Um, my go-to motto is if it mixes, it matches. And that's how I create a lot of my palettes um, or a lot of my color schemes using limited palettes. Um, so like I said, the main colors in this are Payne's gray and, uh, cad orange for, for the skin. And then, um, a lot of these orangey, like a lot of the tones that make up this is just a mixture of that. And I think, let me show you guys my palette. Okay. Here's the, the acrylic palette that I was working with for the skin tone. Um, there's a lot of mixing going on there and I'm not afraid of mixing colors you shouldn't be afraid of muddy colors um i know that's always people's biggest hang up when it comes to kind of mixing stuff but remember muddy colors your dull unsaturated colors provide a wonderful background for your vibrant colors okay and they're going to be perfectly matched um because again if it mixes it matches um it, it just provides a really nice base. And so that's how I'm able to, um, even with this kind of crazy palette, build up my colors in a cohesive way. So yeah, that's it. I mumbled a whole lot. Um, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. Um, a big special thank you to everyone on my Patreon for making these videos possible and for all of you who subscribe and watch. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And tomorrow, hopefully we can get this done. I don't know. That's ambitious to get the whole thing done tomorrow, but um, hopefully by next week. So, all right. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.